What's up guys, it's Josh from Keep It Techie, your go-to channel for all things Linux and tech. And today I'm diving into a crucial tool for anyone running a server, and that's LogWatch. Now, if you guys didn't know, logs are like the lifeblood of your system, constantly recording everything that happens. But who has the time to sift through all those logs? Well, there's a tool called LogWatch. It's like having your own personal assistant, watching over those logs and let you know when something needs your attention. And we'll walk through how to install and configure LogWatch on Rocky Linux. And we'll also set up post fix to make sure those LogWatch reports are sent smoothly. So let's get into it. All right, so why should we care about LogWatch? Well, let me break it down for you. And right now I'm at Red Hat's website. And as you can kind of see, you have to subscribe in order to see everything about LogWatch. But there's other documentation out there, like for instance, on Ubuntu's website, there's a breakdown. And then also I'm gonna show you guys a breakdown right here on the channel. But LogWatch is an open source log analysis tool that simplifies the process of monitoring and managing your system logs. It highlights the important stuff and send you a neat little report, usually via email. And it all depends on if you have email set up on the system or not, but it's a dope little tool. And here's why you need it. Instead of manually going through those logs, LogWatch does it for you. One thing it does is flags unusual activity so you can address potential issues before they become serious problems. Like for instance, one of the things that's included in the report is drive space. And then also this daily report gives you a daily summary of what's happening on your server, helping you maintain security and performance. And you can also tailor the report to focus on the services and details that matter most to you. So in short, LogWatch is about working smarter, not harder. It's perfect for system admins, developers, or anyone managing a server. And I definitely wanted to cover it for people that are looking to become Linux systems administrators. You'll definitely be using LogWatch or at least another tool that looks at the log. So I just wanted to show you guys this one first. So let's hop over to my virtual machine so I can walk you guys through how to tighten up your system. Let's get to it. Before we move forward, I wanted to give a quick shout out to CIQ, the official partner of Rocky Linux. Rocky Linux is a Linux distribution that is intended to be a downstream complete binary compatible release using the Red Hat Enterprise Linux operating system source code. The project is led by Gregory Kurtzer, who was the founder of the CentOS project. So check out Rocky Linux at CIQ.co. All right, so let's get our hands dirty and set up LogWatch as well as PostFix on Rocky Linux. And the first thing you wanna do whenever you're installing any new piece of software, like I always say in every video, when it comes to these server videos and also the desktop videos, is to update your system. And Rocky is a rail-based distro, so it uses DNF. So we're gonna type sudo DNF and then update. And I know this system is updated because I just installed it, I would say a couple hours ago. And boom, yeah, it's good to go. Now let's go down and install LogWatch. And it's a very simple command. Then you could just activate it. You know what I'm saying? Similar to like the firewall or something. I think this tool should be on there. But I know it's a lot of other options out there to manage logs on your Linux server. So maybe that's why they don't include it. But let's go through the install and all we have to do is type sudo dnf install and then the package name is log watch all one word and then we're going to put dash y in there that way we can get it installed it'll answer that question and one thing about log watch i didn't know about until i looked into the application a little bit more it's a pearl application it's written in pearl which i thought was super cool so the next thing we need to do is create a temporary directory to store cache that's one thing log watch actually needs and it may be already on the server. Just to double check, we can type sudo make dir, and then under our var directory, there's a cache directory under here, and then there should be a log watch. Yeah, it is there. So we don't have to make the directory. It's already there. It's created doing the install, which is dope. So we don't have to worry about it. But if you don't have that directory, go on and create it because it needs it. Now, one other thing we need to install is postfix. So postfix 
is a mail server that you can set up on Linux. So it's going to install that as well. And it's a short install because Postfix is kind of small. You know, it's a super cool application. It's it's low on using system resources. That's why Postfix is used a lot on Linux servers. Now, once Postfix is installed, you'll want to configure it. And for a basic setup to send email locally, you can accept the default settings. And I'll show you guys that within the configuration file, which you can manually configure under your ETC directory. And so let's go there right fast. So I can show you guys how to modify it, but you can't set this up as a full blown email server. But anyway, we're just gonna use it locally. So sudo nano and then under ETC post fix. And then there is a main.cf file. That's our configuration file for it. So if we open that up, there's a couple of things you want to look at and just verify that it's enabled for the server. So let's check that out. The host name, I'm going to just put it local host, my host name, and we'll change that. And we'll just change it to local host. And I'm going to remove all that extra stuff off of there because we don't, I'm not going to put a domain on there. And then let's go down a little bit and modify our domain. So we're just going to name it local domain. And then we can remove this off the end of it. Good to go. So local host, local domain. And I'm just showing you a simple way of setting this up. Now my origin, that should be my domain. So let's just comment that out. That way it's seen by the system. Now let's go down and look for our interface. Cause I know we need to just verify that INET interfaces is local host. That's fine. And then I know it's like what my destination, I believe. I think it's further down in here. Yeah, here we go. And what I always do when I quickly set it up, I'll just comment this line out because I, I want to see my host name, localhost my, my domain, as well as localhost and then my domain. And it's basically pulling those variables that we set above. And then lastly, my network, I believe there is further down when you get into the networking section. Let's see, IF config, yeah, my network. And we could just, let's go down. I think it's another one we can modify. Yeah, here we go. So we could just uncomment that out. That's fine. We could leave that there. But all we mainly looking for is the 127.0.0.0 4 slash 8. That's fine. As long as that's there, we're good to go. So let's go down here, Control X, Y press enter to save those changes to the configuration file and we get to go with postfix now let's go down and start and enable postfix so all you got to do is type sudo system ctl start postfix and press enter now start the service for us and then also you want to go in here and enable the service that way our email will start up each time the system reboots so let's go and press enter boom it'll create that symbolic link and we're good to go. So that'll start up. Now, one thing we need to do is configure logwatch next. So I'm gonna just type sudo. And then what we wanna do is copy. There's a like a default logwatch configuration file stored under user share. And I'll show you where that is. You need to get it from over here because the one by default in the default location for logwatch, there's nothing in it. And so this will have at least a base for us. And then we can make our modifications there. And this is why you don't really need to make a backup of the file because you can always grab it from user share and get that configuration file and overwrite what's there on Logwatch. And let's just go to the Logwatch folder that's created when we installed. And then under conf, we could drop that into that directory and it'll overwrite the one that's in there. Now let's go down and configure it. So let's type sudo nano. You can use whatever text editor you want to modify this, but I'm gonna just use nano. So that's etc. And then our Logwatch directory and then conf and then Logwatch. Let's press enter and boom, we got our configuration file open and it's a couple changes we need to make in here as well it's not too difficult what we're looking for is our output and this is basically when you run a command how you want it output it and what we want it is in a mail format so it tells you the options up here to make email default set the output to mail or you can save the file let's say you got a centralized log location you want it to go to you can save it as a file and then you can send it over to that location but we're just going to do mail locally that's the whole purpose of me setting up postfix so we can get mail locally on the server and then you can also put it in different formats like right now i'm gonna just put it i'm gonna leave it in text but you can also get it in an html format that's why i say like you can send it to a centralized location where a web server is and you can open up these log files if you want to the html files and check out the report from there and then also encoding we're just gonna leave that to none input encoding but mail to we want to change that to our local account and so our account on this system is josh at local 
host. And so that's what we gonna send our mail to on this system. And now for the mail from down here, you can leave it as log watch or you can change it to where you know where it's actually coming from. And that's what I recommend you guys do. So you can do local host, but you can also like if you had a domain or something you want to put on your network, another type of host name that you want to put here for this system, then you need to set that in your configurations for Postfix as well as set it in here. But we just gonna use local host like I specified in our configuration file for LogWatch. But you could put whatever you want there really, because this is just basically so you'll know where the log file actually came from when it's sent. Now, let me show you guys some more options because right down in here, there is the details and this basically tells you the level for the report. You can get low, mid or high. And the higher you go, the more information that will be given in the report. So you can just check it out, try different ones and pick which one is best for you. I'm gonna just leave it there. And then our services, I'm gonna leave it to all. That's fine. It'll check all the services that are running on the system and pull in information from it. Now down here below, you could disable certain services that you don't want to see. So let's say you got a web server on here and you don't want to see the logs for that. You could type service equals HTTP, whatever it is for Apache on rail based systems. Or let's say you got a firewall or something that you don't care about as far as UFW, you don't want to see those logs. You can exclude that out of the list. And so we're done with configuring. Let's go on and hit control X and then yes, press enter. That'll save our configuration file. And let's go down and test out our server and see if it actually works. So if we type sudo logwatch and then we can specify the details because, you know, we're running it from the command line, but detail, we can set it to low. We can change our configurations right here from the command line if we need to. We can type our mail to and we can specify Josh at local host and then also our range. So we can specify today and press enter. And if everything is set up properly, we should be able to check our mail on the server. And I'll show you guys how to do that right fast. This is very simple. It's just a short command. All you gotta do is type sudo and then tech you and then our user account. So Josh, and then we want to check our mail. And so let's press enter and that'll let you know you have one message. As you can see right there, it came in at 105. It's from Logwatch and it's already selected. You see that arrow next to the end right here at the beginning? That's how it actually shows. And if you have more than one in there, you can go up and down and select the different ones you want. But I just wanted to walk through and show you guys the full report. So as you can see, this is who it's sending it to, Josh at localhost, and it's coming from Logwatch for localhost, local domain. If we had the name different, you know what I'm saying? That'll, it'll distinguish it a little better. I just didn't set a host name on this system. And then I just put local domain, that's fine. But then the message ID, date, when it was actually sent, processing initiated, and that gives you the time and the information for that. Date range, process today. And like I said, this is a new server, so it's really not much in here, but you can go ahead and check out like DNF RPM. So this is install packages. Let's see, LVM begin. So that breaks down the system, how it's set up. You got user information. If we go back up, you can see how I'm logged into it. I'm logged in via SSH, the amount of times I logged into it, the users that are added to the system. And like I said, this is a real detailed report. Now, right down here, system D. So this is unmatched entries. You can check this out. You know, unmet conditions check, created system user checks, host name set to local host, first time boot. First boot complete was skipped because of an unmet condition check. I think that's what I read earlier. But anyway, it just gives you a whole bunch of stuff in one location. Now, here, here's another port I was talking about. You can see a disk drive, like how much space you're using, and it's putting it in human readable form, which is awesome. You know what I'm saying? You, you're able to see it in the correct sizes instead of like it coming out in all in kilobytes. And then that's pretty much it for our log watch for today and i just always hit q press enter that'll get us out of it and it also holds that message for you and you can add this to a cron job and have it run daily and you can check these reports and that way it can help you get a little bit more information about what's going on with your system or happening on here and also track what users are doing like right here a uh, sudo was used copy it was also to run dnf nano system ctl so i use that and it counts how many times i actually use that sudo to actually run a command and it's dope how it breaks it out by user so you can narrow down who actually did what on a system and then also like i said that sshd you can see 
what IP address this person is coming from. Let's see, Athena. That's my main system name. So that's dope. It's pulling in all that information right there for us. All right, so that wraps up the install and configuration of LogWatch. And we've only scratched the surface of what LogWatch can do, but hopefully you'll see how powerful and convenient it can be for managing your Linux server logs. Now remember, stay informed is key to maintaining a secure and efficient system. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to keep it techie. And also drop a comment if you have any questions or topics you'd like me to cover next. So let's keep learning and growing together in this tech journey. Until next time, stay safe. And of course, keep it techie. Whenever I talk to people, whenever I mentor people uh, dealing with, you know, getting into tech, you got to figure out what you like or what you're interested in because yeah, a lot of people get into the, you know, tech field because you can make a good amount of money. The money is the motivator. But you also, in my opinion, in order for you to be happy, you got to like what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? And so, like for me, a lot of times it doesn't feel like work, bro. Most times it really doesn't feel like work. It's, it's yeah, I'm doing something fun. I'm doing something I love to do. You know what I'm saying? So that's what makes it, you know, great for me.